it is time for Here's the Deal. And joining us tonight, Dara Parker and Lee Checkstead in studio. How are you, ladies? Well, thank you. Good. And Renu Bakshi down at uh, Shaw Tower. How are you, Where Renu? the cauldron is about to be lit. Uh, it's magical, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, was that sort of um, facetious on your part or tongue-in-cheek? Yeah. Yes. Not a big fan of the lighting of the cauldron? Well, I, like the athletes just said, the spirit is in, in the games themselves, not in a piece of metal that's sitting here in Coal Harbour. I get it. It's been lit a number of times since 2010, but it's been paid for by private sponsors. This is tax dollars. I think that our tax dollars can be put to better use. Uh, and I will agree with that. Certainly we need to feed the homeless and look after people with mental illness. But I think it's exciting to why? celebrate a gold medal win with firing it up for a minute or two. Why stick that massive metal clump down there if you're not going to light it when the Olympics are on, Sarah. So my partner was grumbling in the green room watching the segment previously and saying, why can't we get more creative about how we celebrate the Olympic spirit? Why not open up the community centers for a day and actually allow families and youth and young adults to go in and play sports and build on that? Maybe that's a better investment of, is it $200,000 that it's going to cost us? Well, to have it lit for the whole Olympics would have been two hundred grand. It is about $6,400 for four hours. I'm assuming it's the gas. That cost so much money, right? And a couple of guys on overtime to buy her doing up. security. I think I also said they had to have. Yeah, and of course the thing that we're dealing with, you know, Renu, you mentioned government money. The difficulty here is that the whole Olympic thing is so tightly regulated when it comes to sponsorship, right? And you know, it'd be great if Coca-Cola or McDonald's stepped up and said, "Hey, we'll also throw in money to like that because they're sponsors and they can do it." But don't you think we should maybe open it up to other business people potentially? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It just seems so highly controlled to me. I, I, I don't get the whole thing. You said it earlier as well. It's a media agenda. Uh, sorry I, that I said that. Um, I also want to point out I can't really hear you guys that well, so okay. I'm try my best. All right, thank you. You're doing great so far. <laughs> <laughs> you I know what opinion. I want to do? I want to play a <laughs> clip of a gentleman. I heard him on the radio today. Uh, when it became apparent that the cauldron was not lit, and of course today is the fourth anniversary of the start of our games, uh, he stepped up. His name's Paul Milburn. He owns a company called Prism Tech. And he stepped up and said, hey, you know what? I checked with the, the wife, who maybe is the accountant, I don't know, I didn't ask, but uh, a family business, and we're willing to come up with the money to light the cauldron for today. So uh, Brian Coxford spoke to Paul Milburn earlier today. Have a listen. I was stunned to hear that the flame wasn't on. I just assumed that it would be as a, as a customary um, you know, event given that Vancouver hosted the games and supported the athletes and I heard the figure of $6,400 to cover the cost of lighting the flame and, and having it burn for the duration of the Olympics and thought it should happen. So I quickly made the call and made the offer and, and here we are. And unfortunately, of course, they couldn't take his $6,400. Uh, they've got to come up with it another way because he's a private business and stuff. But maybe anonymous donations would work or a little telethon or something. Or let them pay for it and put a sandwich board out there. This four hours was paid to you by. I had no idea the IOC had such a reach that they're controlling Vancouver. This you know, many years across, later. Right? Yeah. That's it amazing. Is, it is interesting. Of course, they can rake in all the money they want for themselves. All right. Um, let's move on to uh, inner city school funding. The Vancouver School Board is taking a look at how it funds schools. And actually, uh, in a really cynical sense, um, it, gosh, you know what? It's the poor schools, and now we're rating the poor schools. You're either tier one, tier two, or tier three. There's levels of Impo impoverishedness. Is that a word? I don't think so. Um, and of course, some schools are worried now, right? They used to be all together and they're like, oh crap, now we're like level two and we'll get less money. Fair or not fair? The issue here is a budget that's too small for the Vancouver School Board. I mean, the Vancouver School Board is faced with an impossible choice. We have limited resources, we need to distribute those, and we need to answer where the most need is, and so we have to create this stratified, you know, three-tier system. So I think it's the best of really ugly choices. I think the intent is good. Yes, it's unfortunate once you put it into terms that, you know, some of these kids are only going to get breakfast and lunch for kids who need it, where other schools are going to get universal food, it is unfortunate, but the intent is to take care of as many kids as possible, and you can't fault them for doing that. No, and as Dara pointed out, the money is ever shrinking. All right, the other uh, and final topic, and um, Renu, I'll start with you uh, because I think you're on the same track as me. All we've heard in recent months is that we're 
we're spitting out too many kids from university with not enough jobs for those kids, or they're not trained for the jobs that are available. We've got to switch over to, to trades. And so what do I get in my Twitter feed today from the SFU Faculty of Education? A tweet that says, want to become a teacher? Attend our next professional development program info sessions, February 26th, March 4th. Details at, you know, the link. Uh, Renu, were you as stunned as I was? Yeah, I mean, and people are out of touch. That, that's just completely ludicrous that they are that out of touch with what's happening in this province. Well, it's part of their job. It's the faculty of education. It's their job to try and draw people to their program. Okay, but w there's a disconnect here because for at least a year, perhaps longer, all we've been hearing is we have a glut of teachers. We have too many teachers. There's not enough jobs for teachers. We need to stop training so many kids to be teachers. Well, it's not the Faculty of Education's job to say we're going to shut our doors because there are too many teachers. That's a fair <laughs> point, but the, the reality be? is, the, the reality is it's like being a starving artist. Where do you go from there? Mm -hmm. why, why, why bother? Yeah, exactly. Aren't we just luring these poor innocent high school kids into a trap? <laughs> well, these kids need to make some decisions about their future and they need to be looking at this and whether there are jobs. Their parents need to be sitting down with them and saying, you want to become a teacher? Well, let's look at the numbers and the fact that there aren't that many teaching jobs out there. Are you sure you still want to go into this? And you raise a valid point. Maybe at those information sessions, they mention that. Isn't there an urban-rural divide here as well? Isn't it very difficult to find a teaching position if you want to be in an urban-based uh, location in BC? But I think there's a number of opportunities available if you're willing to go further afield. Mm. I, I don't know that it's that incredible look I, I'm not sure there certainly aren't massive postings please we're desperate for teachers in rural areas I didn't right. want to start naming them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I just found it a little shocking because that's all I've heard lately is we've got to stop you know sending kids to university and coming out with nothing but debt and a certificate and not a job and there we are saying hey come be a teacher I don't know cynical Cynical Wednesday is what it is. All right, Renu Bakshi, Dara Parker, and Lee Chexa. Thanks, ladies. Thanks. Up next, ordinary Canadians spied on for planning to protest pipelines. Has CSIS crossed the line?